come up, got dropped. As we see now, the movie star rider, uh, I think it's Kapeki, has now dropped off, left his teammate to go ahead. But the peloton is going to be all back together very shortly. Uh -huh. this is red, and, red and black jerseys coming to the front, Robbie. Uh, that indicates to me that maybe Philippe Gilbert is <laughs> going to have a dig this afternoon. Possibly Gilbert or maybe Steve Morabito. We've seen in the action in Sterling. He's yeah. uh, quite close in the overall classification. So maybe they're trying to set something up for him. Well, the breakaway just imploded there on the climb. As the riders come back from the lead group, they try to make it. They put a lot of effort into it too. Now 2.7 kilometres to go and it is still the attacks coming in. Now it's from George Bennett, the New Zealand rider. A big danger, George. He sits in 10th place overall in this race. And Machado goes with the BMC rider. And Machado, who finished third up this climb last year and third overall. He sits at the moment, Machado, just 15 seconds off the lead in the race. Santa Amita who's gone with him and that's a very big acceleration there's a control coming at the front end of the peloton no panic it's Edval Bosenhagen doing the work for Heron Thomas but the man in second position Machado is a very very good climber he's hit them nice and hard well this is when we start calculating seconds that could change it if Machado was to win the 10 second win bonus he would only need to finish six seconds in front of the race behind to take the lead and he's being led up the climb here the other rider just getting onto the back is the good climber from omega it's peter velis but look at the face he's grimacing like anything and again no panic on board edval bosenhagen the experienced professional bike rider he will try and nail them back here but look at machado he goes again and then he goes again on top of that but absolutely no panic by sky durant thomas is Happy enough to sit on the wheel of Edvald Bossenhagen. He's setting the pace, keeping it steady, keeping it regular. They know there's still some danger men behind. Well, it is amazing. Right behind. Yeah, there is Boysenhagen, and right on his wheel is Geraint Thomas. Boysenhagen is the big faithful pacemaker here. All he's trying to do is to ease them back up to this leader. This is the attack, and he's holding it at the moment. Well, Machado is looking for 15 seconds, but TJ Slachter from Blanco is right on the wheel of Geraint Thomas. He's in the place he needs to be, but that's a good way to take the climb for a big guy like Geraint Thomas. Have somebody go up at a good old diesel turbo speed because you don't get those uh, peaks and troughs with the heart rate. It's a very good scenario for Geraint Thomas. It's also a perfect scenario for TJ Slachter. We saw the finish he did in uh, Sterling there where he sprinted away from the rest of the bunch. If they have a steady ride to the top and it's going to be a sprint to the finish, then expect Slachter to come off the wheel. And if Thomas can't finish at least second, he'll lose the jersey. Yep, that's what he'll have to do, uh, but he's just sitting there at the moment. He knows exactly what he needs to do to keep himself at the top end of the leaderboard. Now Peter Velitz grimacing at the front for Omega Farmer. Quick step, looking back to Machado. They're trying to see if they're opening up a gap, but I'd have to say, Robbie, they've got him pretty much pegged at the moment, but Boson Hagen doing a great job. He's got them pretty well pegged at the moment. Look down to the Radio Shack rider number 42, oh, watch Ben out, Hermans. Watch out. Moreno's making the move now. He's in third place in the overall standings. He's just looking for six seconds. This is a move that now Geraint Thomas needs to respond to. You cannot let the day end without giving it your best shot. And Javier Moreno in third place overall is trying to bridge now as Machado goes again here. Followed by Steve Moller, Santa Marita, and then followed by Peter Velitz. They're suffering badly though, Rob, and I'm not sure they can survive up to the top here. Well, Boston Hagen has just not panicked. He's fairly confident he can just rope everything back in. Durant Thomas sitting on his wheel. If, they, if Boston Hagen gets to the point where he feels he doesn't have things under control, a little flick of the elbow, he'll say, mate, Durant, it's time for you to take care of business. 1.4 kilometres to the summit. Javier Moreno is contacting the leaders here. He lies third overall in this race. He wants six seconds, that's all. And they're both hit now out at uh, Thomas. He's got to reply soon. At some point, Thomas is going to have to do something. And he, I think he's now on the front. As he shuts this gap down, that provides a perfect springboard for Slachter to follow him up the climb, keep everything together. And as the wind picks up, I think the rider's going to be faced with a little headwind coming into the last it, corner it as well. It's amazing how the flags are standing straight now. They were dropped and drooped earlier, but now they're together and everything's blowing around up here. It's almost as if we're being hit by a, a tornado on top of the climb. It is an incredible change. This is going to hurt the attackers, I think, now.
Back on Soleil moving up. Everybody trying to get in on the act, but what it, and still now it's being left to the man who leads this race in the ochre jersey. His team now have done all they can. It's back to the leader. And Gelan Thomas is having to close down himself. He's looking over his shoulder, Robbie. That cannot be a good sign. Geraint Thomas just swung away from the front. We're going to see if that's Gerrans. just the front. He goes Gerrans. Gerrans wants to win. The man that won this race overall last year. This day last year he was going wheel for wheel with Alessandro Valverde. And Gerrans went on to win the race. Now the other rider, the danger, Gorka is a gear. has got the back wheel of Simon Gerrans. It's everybody for everything now. And quite literally, every second counts here. Well, I think Simon Gerrans is feeling a little bit better. This is just a, a great move by him. They can let him go, but the guy in front of him, Moreno, they can't. They have to chase him. And this is Moreno going for gold. Is Gerrans going to make it a perfect Australia day and give Orica Greenage the first Australian win of the week in the Santos Tour Down Under? It's a huge effort by Gerrans, and he's coming up to the back wheel of Moreno. He's looked over his shoulder. He's seen he's got a gap, and now he's going to punch it. The ideal scenario is to get to Moreno, rest for a moment, and then bash right over the top of him towards that finish line. Well, he'll take the 10-second win bonus, which would help Gerrans Thomas if he comes up he's got to get over the Spanish rider first who wants that 10 seconds he then he only needs a gap of self a few seconds to win the stage and take the lead well, if he wants to win this thing he's going to get going to have to hold off Simon Gerrans and look at Slachter oh. has left Geraint Thomas behind and he's up and over Simon Gerrans they've all hit Geraint Thomas as Tom Slechter has contacted this is the man who's going for the race lead the man who's the best young rider Slechter is going Gerrans has got onto his back wheel but he might be spoiling the fun for the Australian as we now head up towards the line the face of Tom Slechter and Gerrans goes Gerrans wants this the first Australian victory of the week and it comes on Australia day Simon Gerrans, last year's winner, grits his teeth as he comes off this bend. This is the corner. Come on, you Simon. Get out of there for Australia Day, mate. Slechter. Simon Gerrans. Simon Gerrans gets it on the line. He gets the victory and, it, more importantly, protects the 10-second bones of a second. Slechter, he gets six seconds and he gets the race lead. I think he's got this to a one, but Simon Gerrans, well, happy Australia Day. Well, it was perfect. He's been feeling a little bit rough all week. He said, wait and see on Saturday. We've waited and we've seen. That is what a true champion does. They take the disappointment, they put it behind them, and then they come out and give it absolutely everything in their last possible chance. That was just a super classy ride. Now, to Tom Slechter was five seconds behind Geraint Thomas. He's got himself uh, a six-second time bonus. So he must be the leader of the race with one day to go. This young kid at 23 years of age, just look at that, Robbie. You call it. He's your man. Well, Simon Gerrans, he was here 12 months ago today. He was against Alejandro Valverde. He didn't go early enough last year, couldn't get around Valverde, around this bend, and was just edged out. He made sure he led to the bend. But I think Tom Yelta Slugt has realised, I'm getting six seconds. I've created a gap behind me. I've got the race won, and it's Australia Day. He Absolutely. couldn't possibly win, could he? Well, it is amazing. He's got the race lead, and that's a fantastic result for Orica Green Edge, too. And the first Australian victory of the Santos Tour Down Under this week. So he's made amends. Last year's winner is back on the winner's podium, at least here on the old Wollonga Hill. That'll be a, a big congratulations for him from the team tonight.